a liquid flow rate sensor. Now, not that many years ago, you'd have had to go to an industrial supplier for something like this, and it would have cost you an arm and a leg. It would have cost you 40 or 50 quid for something ridiculous um, to buy something like this. But because everybody's into Arduinos these days, you find them on eBay for pound fifty-eight, And this one came from Lakey X 101 So, um... I decided to add this to an order because I just wanted to see what was in it. Because you can do that when it's quite cheap. So it's got three wires going in, red, black and yellow. It's got uh, the two ports and a little arrow that indicates that the liquid is supposed to flow in this direction. And the only difference between the input and output appears to be the output has quite a big hole down the middle of it. And the input has a smaller hole. I don't even know if that's actually showing up. And the cable, I'll just, yeah, there's, there's a smaller hole. Uh, the, when you put the pipe into this, it's quite unusual because although this feels like a rigid plastic, the pipe is, I presume, a fr fairly friction fit to the inside of that. But although it feels rigid, when you put it into this side, it actually, it's tapered so that as it screws in, the pipe that you've put in gets squeezed inside that because the inner ring con uh, constricts onto it, which is quite interesting. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Let's see what makes this tick. Assuming it's not glued shut. It may be glued shut, in which case it will end up possibly being a bit destructive. Yeah, it's, it's nice that you can get stuff like this at sort of like what you might call experimenter's prices. Obviously, if it was an industrial application, you'd want to use industrial components, but for prototyping, experimentation or whatever, it's quite handy that you can get things at a reasonably low cost. I'm looking at the head in this screw, it's way off centre to the actual the threaded bit. It's a bit tacky. And these are just self-tapped in. So first thing that comes off is this covering a little circuit board. And this does actually just come right off as a module. And it's got a hole in the middle for the spindle. O-ring for sealing. Uh, the little turbine blade doesn't seem to have any sort of directional sort of thing that would indicate it, you know, it's not scooped or anything like that. And it's got a little magnet on it. I guess that's a magnet. Ferrite ring magnet, yeah, with a little push-on retaining disc. And that's loose. It feels as though it's got a pattern inside that locks onto the plastic shaft of this. And there's the matching bit of shaft in there that this just sits over. OK, let's see what that couples with then. Came out fairly easy. Well, that looks like a Hall Effect sensor. Yeah, a Hall Effect sensor and there's a resistor. I wonder what the resistor's for. So we've got red, black and yellow. The red is going straight down to the Hall, center, hall, sen hall, sensor, hall Effect sensor. The black is going to the Hall Effect sensor and the yellow is going to the Hall Effect sensor but there's another continuation of the track round there to the resistor to the positive, the five, plus 5 volts I guess. So that must just be a pull-up resistor on the output of this. Yeah, not really an awful lot to it. I wonder how many uh, steps the magnetic thing has around it. Uh, if I got a magnet. Cue the neodymium iron boron magnet in a plastic bag to stop Swerf sticking to it. Is it going to rotate it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's definitely a magnet in the middle then. And for every full revolution of this, it does, the magnet in the middle does about four, uh, for every four of these, oh, I, I can't even remember how many that was, let's see, let's try that again, one, two, it seems to do about an eighth of a turn for every revolution of this magnet, it's quite hard to see because it jumps around quite quickly, but it's a multiple, it's got a multiple fields on it for the, uh, to create a higher number of pulses it rotates. That's quite neat. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a well worth taking to bits. I wonder if uh, I've, when I bought this, I was thinking you know, it would be quite neat if it was a maybe it was a spinning magnet in a coil or something like that. I mean, obviously it was going to be a Hall effect sensor, I guess, or opto. But I thought it'd been quite neat to, if it'd been able to be used as a like mini uh, water turbine. It would have been quite useful just for generating very low currents from a low water flow. But it's it's interesting enough. It's quite interesting as it is.